afternoon. I'm Shami Mali from the Fiji Women's Crisis Centre. And uh, the Crisis Centre team is represented today by myself, Edwina Kopetsuba on my right, and Bhante Van Narayan on my left. Uh, right at the outset, I wish to state that as a human rights organisation, to reach here has been a tremendous task for us. It has taken months of agonizing and soul searching to reach here today and participate in a process that we believe is seriously flawed. However, this is a small window of opportunity that is allowing us for the first time in perhaps six years to publicly state what we feel and believe and hopefully, hopefully it will be for public knowledge and what has public. While we are presenting together with the Fiji Women's Rights Movement, our sister organization, this is not a combined set of recommendations, but the two have been developed together in consultation and are meant to be complementary. Because of time constraints, I request that we present our recommendations for 15 minutes, each followed by 10 minutes of questions, if any, since we were given 40 minutes. And if there are questions, the questions at the end will be filled by all The Fiji Women's Crisis Center is a human rights organization established in 1984, which provides crisis counseling, etc. Uh, for women and girls and children who are sufferers and survivors of all forms of violence. We are also involved in public advocacy and community education on gender-based violence. Our strategies are based on the conviction that violence against women is a fundamental human rights and development issue. Our work addresses all forms of violence against women. The, the Fiji Women's Crisis Center is also at the moment the current chair of the Fiji NGO Coalition on Human Rights. The center also has consistently advocated for democracy, the rule of law, and human rights throughout the course of its history. The protection of human rights requires accountable democratic government, adherence to the rule of law and constitutionality. The FWCC upholds the Constitution Amendment Act 1997, also referred to as the Constitution, and the 2009 Court of Appeal Judgment of Garase v. Maid Marama, 2009. We note that the refusal of the Interim Military Administration to abide by the 2009 Court of Appeal Judgment and the Constitution has led to a lacuna in constitutionality in Fiji. In this regard, the Fiji Women's Crisis Center notes that this Constitution Commission has been set up outside the framework of the Constitution Amendment Act 1997, ostensibly as part of a process to retain Fiji to parliamentary democracy. We support an immediate return to parliamentary democracy we consider that due to the unconstitutional nature of this commission, this commission should restrict itself to making recommendations to amend the 1997 constitution. We support the return to parliament under the Constitution Amendment Act 1997. It's our belief that once parliament is reconstituted, issues of concern in the constitution, as identified by this commission, can be amended by the process set out in the Supreme Law. This report by the FWCC is premised on this basis. We make these recommendations without acknowledging the legitimacy of the current military regime, nor the agencies and the agencies appointed by it, consistent with the rule of law, human rights, and democracy embedded in the International Bill of Rights. We maintain that only an elected legislature has the legal authority to amend the existing constitution, which we consider to be extant. Any suggestions that we make in these recommendations for constitutional reforms need to be made by a lawfully elected legislature and government and not an unrepresentative constituent, a constituent assembly. We call for the total withdrawal of the military forces, of the Fiji military forces from all current government structures to ensure a free and non-threatening process in the return to democracy. We are acutely conscious of the continued ambivalence and conflictedness of our present circumstances, compounded by added misgivings about certain aspects of the process such as the dearth of civic, civic education, the relatively brief period for submissions and consultations, as well as the potential for abuse in the discretion to appoint members of the Constituent Assembly to debate the draft document that should be produced. The Fiji Human Rights Assembly prefers this report on provisions to strengthen human rights protections in the Constitution without prejudice to its position on the continued, continued legitimacy of the Constitution. This document is not intended to and must not be construed as in any way legitimizing the supported abrogation of the Constitution Amendment Act 1997 and any purported new legal order subsequently established. I shall now ask Wendell and Arai to carry out the second part of the conversation. Thank you. My role today is to talk to you about some of the human rights issues that we believe should be addressed in the Constitution. As a human 
rights organizations, the Fiji Women's Crisis Center encourages the strengthening of human rights protections in the 1997 Constitution. While the protections in the Constitution were progressive, there is room for improvement. We have set out in these recommendations detailed commentary on various issues, and I will only address you on some specific aspects of our um, recommendations. Our first recommendation on the Bill of Rights is that the equality provisions in that bill should be strengthened. We have recommended the addition of the grounds of pregnancy, conscience, and gender identity. While we believe that the grounds of non-discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation should be retained, gender identity is a wider construct and the inclusion of this ground will offer constitutional protection to equally vulnerable and marginalized members of our community. Secondly, we have recommended the Constitution recognize additional rights, including the right of young persons or youth to participate in the political, social, and economic life of the nation, the rights of older citizens to fully participate in society and to live with dignity and respect, the rights of persons with disabilities to be treated with dignity and to access resources, places and information to overcome constraints arising from their disabilities, the right to vote, the right to bodily and psychological integrity, and various economic and social rights. While we believe that economic and social rights are just as important as civil and political rights, we do not consider that there should be any artificial construct of differentiation made between these sets of rights. Both sets of rights are interdependent and each set needs the other for full realization. In respect of economic and social rights, our view is that the issue of resources is a consideration, but not necessarily a determining factor under the progressive realization of rights approach, which has been adopted by the United Nations human rights bodies and other international entities, including courts. We also wish to emphasize the need for the continuation of the fundamental rights and freedoms protected by the 1997 Constitution, including freedom of speech and a free media. <coughs> At this point, may I draw your attention to the banners held up behind us, particularly to the banner stating, uphold the rule of law, support democracy. These banners were put up at the Crisis Centre building on Fiji Day on Wednesday and were the subject of much attention by the police who demanded that the banners be taken down. In essence, we were being censored for the very views that we expressed before this day. This harassment forms the backdrop to our submissions today and is the reality of the environment in which we exist. We consider the issue of access to justice to be vital. The governments and the public service exist to serve the people, but that is observed more in theory than in practice. It is an individual's right to have his or her matters attended to within a reasonable time and to know the reasons why a particular course of action was pursued. The right of access to justice for all persons is a fundamental right to enforce compliance with the provisions of the Constitution, including the Bill of Rights. The high cost of accessing legal services and the limited availability of legal aid has meant that the disadvantage in society, including women, have had limited effective access to justice. We have therefore recommended, amongst other things, the right to administrative action that is expeditious, lawful, reasonable, and procedurally fair, and the right to be given written reasons for any administrative action, whether one is adversely affected by it or not. These rights are to be amplified in relevant legislation and include the right of review of administrative action by an independent tribunal and or a court. We note many recent decrees issued by the interim military government have restricted and indeed taken away the right of review by our courts. Along with recognizing rights and ensuring equality, we believe that the Constitution needs to set out the limited circumstances in which rights can be restricted. In particular, it is important that the Constitution place restrictions on the quantum and length of permitted derivations from fundamental rights and freedoms. There are some fundamental rights and freedoms which may not be limited in any circumstances. These include the right to life, freedom from torture, 
cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment, freedom from slavery or servitude, the right to a fair trial, and the right to habeas corpus. Finally, we believe that it is essential for the implementation of human rights in Fiji that the Fiji Human Rights Commission regains its credibility, which was lost due to its response to the December 2006 coup, and that that commission is reformulated in accordance with Paris principles. In order for this to happen, we consider it essential that the commission have a full-time chairperson who is not the ombudsman, that there be a mixture of full and part-time commissioners with at least two full-time commissioners. It is also essential that corresponding obligations be imposed on government not to delay appointments and to ensure that funding and resources are made available to them.